Hey guys, uh, welcome to our tiny house. My name's Key from Lodgeland and uh, let me show you through. This is our largest model called the Crow's Nest. We call it the Crow's Nest because it's got two lofts, so the crows are nice and high up and they've got windows which can sort of get a, get a good view of the surrounding. But let's have a look and I'll show you in a little bit more detail. So the lofts in either corner are different sizes. The one up here, as you can see, um, is a little bit bigger and it also has the moon roof. So that opens up. So if you do put solar panels on top of the roof, it does make it a little easier to get up there um, and uh, you know clean the solar panels down and stuff like that if you need to get on the roof for some reason. Um, the other little uh, crow's nest up here in the opposite corner um, is slightly smaller, but both of the crow's nests can still fit a, um, a full queen size bed if that's what you want to do. We've got a single and a queen and also another queen downstairs. Um, as you can see, the kitchen is a galley type kitchen. Um, it's enough for a full size fridge in the corner there. Um, and we've tried to utilize all the space possible for storage. So there's plenty of storage up overhead, uh, just underneath where the air conditioner is. Um, there's a little, uh, you know, a sort of couch, a built-in seat, which is over the side here, storage underneath here as well. Um, all the ladders sort of uh, pack away. This is quite similar to a lot of tiny houses, I guess. So uh, these just go up like that. When you need to hop upstairs, you just pull this out like so. That holds the ladder in place. So it's quite a sturdy ladder to go up there. On some of the models uh, that we've got, we've also got steel ladders as well, if you prefer. Um, then inside the bedrooms, as you can see, the, uh, the bottom downstairs bedroom, which is the master bedroom, we've got some storage. So in here, you can see this storage, which you can uh, hang full, full height gowns, uh, and then down below for some drawers and shoes and stuff like that. Uh, once again, trying to utilize all of that overhead space around the beds um, for additional storage as well. And another little cupboard in there, as you can see. All the lights throughout the entire tiny house are LEDs. That's already been pre-fitted in. Um, so there's lights in all of these areas in here um, and all on the roof. Now, inside this little cabinet, um, this is where the main control panel is. All the uh, power sockets and so forth, obviously made to Australian standard, as with all the windows, um, are all made to Australian standard, Australian standard approved. And also the windows are double glazed as well. So I've got a little bit of a breakfast bar here. Um, this is a great spot to have some stools because the bar height here is a little bit high. We make the bar height here a little bit higher so it gets over the wheel arches uh, down below. Um, and when you open this window, it gives you a really great vista. So typically this design of tiny house, this is the type of design that you might want to, um, uh, you know, face this direction out towards a really nice view if you've got one on the property. But uh, yeah, when you uh, open up all these windows and especially the windows up top there, you'll get a really great airflow through. So on those hot summer days and stuff like that, instead of having to use the aircon all the time, um, yeah, you might want to pop this window and one of the upper windows and that way you'll get a draft which comes up and you know it really cools the whole place down. Uh, so this little laundry area in here, this is the type of area that you'd want to probably put a washing uh, machine. We've got a floor waste in here. Look, we've just got a whole lot of boxes stacked up in here because we actually stay in this one ourselves from time to time. But we've got a bunch of boxes and garbage stacked in there. There's a PowerPoint, there's a waste, and also there's a water outlet on the wall, so it's ready to go if you want to put a washing machine. Look, some guys might want to double stack a washing machine and a dryer, for instance, if you if you wanted, or a, or you could actually put a washing machine down below and put a little uh, bench in there yeah. if you wanted to, uh, you know, make some extra storage space. All the electricals, uh, for instance, all the control panel, fuses, power points, and so forth, are all the Australian standard type um, and all Australian standard approved. Inside the bathroom, um, you can see we've got a uh, shower, toilet. At the moment, we've got a uh, just a standard uh, style shower with a curtain, which you can just pull across like that. Um, we're using uh, water, which is actually bore water in this particular tiny house. So it's got drawing from a bore and then uh, going through the shower. And then we're using a Renai uh, instantaneous hot water service, which hot water service, which runs on gas. Now, of course, you could use solar as well, but you know, because of the size of the tiny house, you're going to have to sacrifice some of the solar uh, hot water for solar power. So solar pa power panels, if you're going to have got that one space on the roof, which you're going to use for everything. Because this is a fairly large um, tiny house, we can fit eight uh, you know, full-size uh, solar panels on the roof. 
Um, but if you put the uh, solar hot water heating, you're most likely going to have to take off two of those solar panels for the hot water. But we just find gas is, uh, you know, quite a dense uh, form of energy. And, you know, if, with two standard uh, full-size gas cylinders, um, you're generally going to be able to get through pretty much a whole year having showers, uh, you know, maybe five or six showers every week. Anyway, uh, yeah, inside the bathroom here, we've got a bit of storage under the sink here. Uh, we've got a composting toilet. So this particular type of toilet, uh, what you do is you basically go into a bucket and then you, we're just using sawdust. So you just have to throw some sawdust on top of, you know, uh, your waste. Uh, and then that'll go into a composting bin to get rid of it. Or you can take it to a municipal waste sort of uh, area to dispose of it. Um, now, of course, if you want to remove that, you can obviously put in a conventional type flushing toilet. Fairly easy to modify from one to the other. Um, yeah, we've actually got the, uh, the exhaust which comes out here. Um, and then there's an exhaust which uh, is on the external of the building already, so that can take some of those fumes and stuff like that out of the building. Um, you can have an electrically fitted uh, fan connected to the toilet alone, so when you drop the seat, it actually will extract the air out of the toilet and actually dry the feces out a little bit quicker. Um, but anyway, there's another fan, of course, already fitted into the bathroom up here. So normally it closes like that to make it quite airtight. We've tried to make all of the uh, tiny houses airtight as possible, so you notice all the windows are shut fairly tight, um, uh, all using the aluminium profile. All the windows also have blinds which drop down like this, or almost all, I should say, not all of them. So there's fly screens like that which you can drop down over the windows. Um, yeah, and if you do need to get a bit more ventilation, as I was saying before, yeah, the, the, the fan just pops open like that, and then you can hit the button next to the door here and then you can hear the fans just running that down out, out there so you know if you're going to the toilet or using the shower obviously you want to turn the fan on so there's a reason why our room up here you probably have a little bit of space to put some uh, little bedside drawers and stuff like that on the side here um, the other thing is yeah once again we've tried to make uh, the windows up here open up to allow maximum airflow so these just open up like that if you just push them all the way out to hold themselves open and then of course yeah if you're leaving them open in the evening to keep the mozzies out yeah you want to put those fly screens down like so now this is the moon roof up top it's got a gas lift on it so it's not heavy to lift once you open it you just let go and it will uh, push itself fully open like that and there's obviously a really great spot to be able to climb up onto the roof if you need to maintenance clean the gutters so if you're collecting water, for instance, off the roof, you probably will want to clean the gutters from time to time. And the other thing is, yeah, if you've got solar panels, yeah, good idea to just give them a wipe once a year, just hop up through the roof and then uh, clean them down. Now I've got a couple of the crow's nests here ready to go. These ones are just being finished off for a couple of customers up at the Yarra Valley and also another one out in the countryside. Uh, as you can see, some of them we ship out, um, you know, just like this with no uh, aircon units and no solar panels on them. Uh, the solar panels have to be fitted later. So either we can do that for you or alternatively, we can wire everything up. So you can see up the top there, we've got the wires all ready to go. So all you'd have to do is once they're in position, you can put the solar panels on top. Obviously, it's not great to be transporting these with solar panels on the roof because, uh, you know, you could be travelling at potentially 100 k's an hour on the freeway. Um, and, uh, yeah, with the aircon units, some people can get the aircon units like this pre-fitted or alternatively, we can supply them like this with uh, no aircon installed and then you can do that yourself with your own uh, electrician or plumber. The other thing I wanted to also show you is the underfloor tanks. This is also another thing that we do for some customers. As you can see, we've got these underfloor tanks underneath the chassis here. I might actually go around the other side so you can get a better view of them. Now the underfloor tanks can be an important thing depending on your council. See some councils will require you to show that you can get rid of waste and they're completely standalone units. Um, so not connected to your uh, you know, plumbing or, or for instance, a septic tank. So these tanks under here, they're controlled by a series of these valves, these gate valves here. So you can open and close these gate, gate valves um, and basically either have all of them turn into grey water waste or you can use them all for drinking water waste or a combination of two for drinking water and two for... Uh, you know, grey water, water or black water waste if you really wanted to. So obviously once you turn them into, you know, grey or black water, you don't really want to turn them back into drinking water. So it's a one-way journey once you start doing that. 
Um, but yeah, just had to point that out. If you do want underfloor tanks, something you have to give us lots of notice for, because the underfloor tanks really have to be put in at the time we manufacture the chassis. Um, so yeah, definitely you'd want to be giving us a good sort of six months notice if that's the configuration you want us to put in, because they're quite hard to fit in later on. Now, another thing I wanted to show you guys is the uh, triaxle and torsion suspension system. Like a lot of the tiny houses will go the, a cheaper option where they just use leaf suspension. But, uh, you know, the problem with using leaf suspension, it does lift the axle significantly above the wheels. And that means that uh, your whole floor level has to be lifted up. And then that means you're going to lose a lot of height internally inside the tiny house itself. Um, meaning that if you've got those lofts and the lower floor, it's gonna feel very cramped inside. So one of the things that we've done to give us about another 30 centimeters or so worth of space inside the tiny house is to really try to drop that whole floor level. So it's a more complicated design because it means we've got, um, you know, these wheels here, which is sitting, you know, countersunk into the floor in, in parts and obviously it's a lot cheaper just to lift the entire floor above all the wheels like that but you know you end up with a much more ugly and uh, much less nice house uh, internally so under here you can see the torsion suspension there's a european design type of torsion system so that's why we've got this big bar here um, so what happens is there's big um, rubber bushes inside this bar and this bar will essentially be bending like this so you're able to essentially have the floor uh, protrude past the, uh, the, 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 the wheel axle. Um, anyway, so that's all in there. Obviously electric brakes as well and a very heavy duty frame all with the jacks on the corners like you can see there and like you can see there. So once you get these into place, you can wheel these jacks down and stabilize each corner of the tiny house.